Grace and peace to you and welcome this morning on the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, today we finish our series of the stories that Jesus tells in the Gospel of Matthew. We've gone through 14 uh, stories uh, and we'll start something else uh, next week. Not exactly sure what yet, but uh, we just have one day before Reformation comes at the end of October, so it's hard to believe time is going like that. Welcome to our online community and uh, whoever's joining us on WebEx, great to have you. Uh, with us as well. Uh, today, our story from the gospel is the one about the master who gives three slaves three different amounts of money and expects them to do something with it. Sorry, I got confused there about uh, whether we were having a prelude, but we need to have our confession first, so. There we go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us gather with true hearts that confess our sins to God, that earnestly ask for forgiveness, and that trust in our renewal for the work of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The way the I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And the the Lord Almighty God, merciful Father, I confess to you all my sins with which I have offended you and my neighbors. I am sorry for them. I devote myself to repentance and pray for your mercy. In your boundless grace and compassion, send me your Holy Spirit, that I may be strengthened in my faith and made ready for a life obedient to your will and your ways. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Therefore, in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now the prelude.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made known his salvation, has revealed God's righteousness in the sight of the nations. God remembers his steadfast love and faithfulness. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord. For he is coming to redeem the earth. God will rule the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Let us pray. Gracious God, you empower us with gifts that build us up and you call us to use these gifts for the building of your kingdom. Awaken in us the awareness of what you have given us and stir up our courage and confidence to use what we have been given without hesitation or fear, trusting that you will bless the work we do with what we have received from you. Full of the Spirit, give us the solid evaluative point of view that all we should do should be to further the revelation of your glory. We ask this in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Please join me in our entrance hymn. God, whose giving knows no ending, from your rich and endless store, nature's wonder, Jesus' wisdom, costly cross, grave shattered door, gifted by you, we turn to you, offering up ourselves in praise. <clears throat> Thankful song shall rise forever, gracious donor of our days. Skills and time are ours for pressing toward the goals of Christ, your Son. All in peace and health and freedom, races joined, the church made one. Now direct our daily labor, lest we strive for self alone. Born with talents, make us servants fit to answer at your throne. Treasure, too, you have entrusted, gain through powers your grace conferred. Ours to use for home and kindred, and to spread the gospel word. Open wide our hands in sharing, as we heed Christ's ageless call, healing, teaching, and reclaiming, serving you by loving all. Good morning. Let me take off my mask to avoid fogging my glasses. The first lesson today is from 1 Peter chapter 4. Listen, God's fulfillment of everything is very near. Therefore, have a solid Christian evaluative point of view on all things and be level-headed in your prayers. Above all, have intense holistic love for each other, for holistic love covers a plethora of sins. Also, be hospitable to one another without grumbling about it. And like good stewards of the diverse grace of God, serve one another 
with whatever gift each of you has received. If someone speaks, speak God's word. If someone serves, serve with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 37. I will read the words in italics, and the congregation will respond in the words in bold type. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they shall soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust the Lord and be good, so that you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light, and the justice of your cause like the new day. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not have wrath. It leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked, the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land, and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees their wickedness coming. Better is a little that the righteous person has than the abundance of many wicked. The wicked borrow and do not pay back, but the righteous are generous and keep giving. Our steps are made firm by the Lord when he delights in our way. Though we stumble, we shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds us by the hand. Depart from evil and do good, so you shall abide forever. For the Lord loves justice, and he will not forsake his faithful ones. Please stand for the gospel. Listen now for the gospel. Hallelujah. It is God's word that changes us. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, melt and break our hearts of stone until we give our lives to God and God alone. Come, Holy Spirit, root in us God's living word that we may show the faithfulness of Christ our Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, find the broken, find the lost, Confirm in us the fire and love of Pentecost. Listen now for the gospel. Hallelujah. It is God's word that changes us. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Lord, While still in the temple speaking with the Jewish religious leadership about the kingdom of God, Jesus told another parable, saying, it is just like a man who, before setting off on a trip, called his slaves and turned over his resources to them. To one of them he gave five silver coins, to another slave he gave two silver coins, and to a third slave he gave one silver coin. He gave to each one just what they had the ability to manage. Then the man went on his trip. Right away, the first slave took his five coins and worked hard with them and gained another five silver coins. The slave with two silver coins did the same and gained another two silver coins. But the slave who took the one silver coin went and buried in the ground to his uh, buried in the ground his lord's silver. After a good bit of time had passed, the lord of those slaves returns from his trip and settles his agreement with them. The slave with the five silver coins came forward, bringing the additional five silver coins, and said, Lord, you turned over five silver coins to me. 
See, I have gained another five silver coins. His Lord said to him, Very well, good and faithful slave. You are faithful to what is little. Now I will put you in charge over what is much. Enter into the delight of your Lord. The slave with two silver coins then came forward and said, Lord, you turned over two silver coins to me. See, I have gained another two silver coins. His Lord said to him, Very well, good and faithful slave. You are faithful to what is little. Now I will put you in charge over what is much. Enter into the delight of your master. But then the slave who took the one silver coin came and said, Lord, I know that you are a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And being afraid, I went and I concealed your coin in the ground. See, here, have what is yours. But the Lord said to him, You evil and lazy slave! You had known that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter? Then it is necessary that you throw my silver to the money changers, and in coming back I would have received what was mine with interest. Accordingly, take the silver coin away from him. Give it to the slave who now has ten silver coins. For to the one having, all will be given, and he will be abounded. But the one not having, what he has will be taken from him. And this useless slave, throw him to the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Denzel Washington, the Oscar winning, Tony winning, Golden Globe winning actor, that Denzel Washington, gave a speech one time not too far from here at his alma mater, Fordham University, for commencement. And he said to the graduating class, you will fail at something. It's inevitable. Embrace it. If you do not fail, it means you're not trying. Not exactly the words I thought, I think the graduating class was expecting to hear at their commencement ceremony, but Denzel Washington was actually speaking wise words to them because they're a generation who has grown up in a society that is almost myoptically focused on success to the exclusion or the ignoring of failure. One of the criticisms I hear a lot from about Facebook is that it's simply a social platform on which we get to proclaim our successes. How amazing our significant other is. How amazing our career is. How amazing our vacation is. How amazing my oatmeal was this morning at breakfast. I don't blame Facebook, really. I, I think it's been going on for a while. I remember the Christmas letters my parents would get in Christmas cards. You remember Christmas cards? We used to send those in the mail. Remember the mail? Those letters were basically long Facebook posts, right? With 12 months of how amazing and successful life had been for their family. These days, every kid on the team on every team, in every league, gets a trophy. The very fact that Denzel Washington thought that he was going to shake up that graduating class by telling them that they will fail at something, and if they don't fail, they're not trying, says something about how we as a society approach success and failure or not. Which made me a little hesitant to end our wonderful series about the story Jesus tells us in the Gospel of Matthew with this story. It is the last one he tells, but it's a story about failure. 
Well, it seems like it's a story of two-thirds about success and one-third about failure, but really it's all about failure, about how one approaches the fear of failing. It is a good story, at least by that I mean Jesus tells a story that's easy for us to hear and to remember because it's got three characters in it. You know, all good stories have three characters, three pigs, three bears, three billy goats gruff, three servants who each get coins from their master before the master goes on a trip. Now we hear that they don't just randomly receive coins. It says the master is intentional about giving to each slave what the master thinks the slave can handle. Which means we have a master that is managing for success, not for failure. A manager who has assessed the uh, uh, gifts and skills of the workers that he has and then has appropriately given resources and tasks to those workers that will help them succeed and not fail. Because success or failure is a possibility for all three of these slaves. They have no idea what the outcome is going to be in the end. Though we hear that the third slave, he is going to very consciously plan to make sure he knows what the outcome is going to be. He plans to make sure that he's going to be able to give that coin back to the master. Why? Why don't we hear that the other two slaves also, the ones with the five and the two coins, also run out into the field and bury their coins in order to give them back to the master when the master returns? We don't know. Did you notice Jesus doesn't say much at all? about the first and second slave. We don't get many details about them at all. We get a lot of details about the third slave, the failure, which is why I hesitated having this story at the end of our nice little series. But then, what does this third slave really fail at? You know, if you look at the details, he looks like he succeeds, really. I mean, his plan was to go out and dig a hole and bury the coin in order to conceal it. And he succeeds. He could take a picture of the hole that he dug and how he covered it up and put it on his Facebook page. Look how amazing I am at concealing coins in the ground. And then his plan was to present the coin back to his master when the master came. And he succeeds in doing that. Here is the coin. How has he failed? Well, it's his fear that's misplaced. And how he fails is that he has put his fear in the wrong place. He's failed in appropriately understanding his fear of failure. Because this third servant, this third slave, is afraid of the master. Because the servant has got this misguided understanding of who the master is. From this third slave's perspective, the master is a harsh man, a hard man, actually an unjust manager, one who profits from someone else's work, one who exploits others' labor for his own gain, harvests where he didn't plant, takes the crops that somebody else has tended. And so this third slave is afraid of the wrath and unjust harshness of his master. And because this is his fear, and his fear of failing is suffering the wrath of his master, he decides that the best way to succeed 
is to do nothing. Bury the coin. Which is just the opposite of the first two slaves, isn't it? And the first two slaves are not afraid of the master. The first two slaves actually get right to work with what the master has given them because they don't see the master as a hard man. They are right on board with the master's program. They understand that he's managing them for success, giving them the resources they can handle, the job they can do. From their perspective, the fear of failure is not losing the coins, it's just not doing the work. Their fear of failure is doing nothing. Which is what the third servant does. Nothing. And understands that as success. But you know, that's what we do when we're afraid of failing, really. We selfishly turn in on ourselves to protect ourselves. We're not able to understand how the master sees us, how we've been assessed and assigned by the master. We also come up with our own plans about how to protect ourselves and succeed in not failing. Our own plan. It's hard to transcend that and get on board with the master's plan because we're afraid that's only going to lead to failure. But the master's plan is one of success, as we've heard in all of these stories. Wild success, really. Here, in this story, the last one, we hear a doubling of the coins for those who work. Remember all the way back in June when we began the series and we heard three parables about gardening. The harvest was wildly abundant beyond the expectations of anyone, a hundredfold. But we see that this third servant has failed because he gets none of that. In fact, what we see is that the third servant succeeds in his fear of failure. Completely. And we're reminded that, yeah, this is the alternative that God presents for us. We're reminded that throughout Scripture, when we have a different perspective on ourselves, and when we decide that we have a better plan for how things should go than God's plan, that God often just allows us to succeed, allows us to receive the consequences, the logical consequences of the choices that we have made. That's what happens to this third slave. He succeeds out of his fear of failure. He had no interest at all in the resources that his master had given him, no interest in this coin. Buried it, didn't want to do anything with it, simply wanted to give it back, get rid of it, because it was the source of his fear. And he succeeded. The master said, fine, I'll take the coin. Now you have nothing. And this third servant didn't see the master as managing for success, but was afraid that the master was headed for failure, that what the master was leading him to was being treated harshly, suffering. This slave had no interest in the master's plan, being part of the work of that plan, and so the master said, fine, you're liberated from any responsibility of being associated with me. And now you have nothing. It's a parable about failure. And what we do is the fear of failing. And what we're to take away from it, of course, is that our master, our gracious and merciful and compassionate and loving master, is managing us for success. Wild, incredible, unexpected success. 
regardless of what we seem to be seeing in the moment. Regardless of the naysayers. Regardless of the temptation to come up with our own plan because we're afraid of failing. What we have heard in this story and in every story that Jesus has told is that God's goal is for us to succeed, for God's plan to be successful. And because we trust in that and hope in that, we can take part in that. We can embrace the identity that God has given us as fellow workers, people who are carrying out the business of God's kingdom, working toward the goal of succeeding in God's plan. People, though, who are also realistic about Denzel Washington being right. We are going to fail at something. Even God tells us it's inevitable. Embrace it, folks. In fact, if you don't fail, it really means you're not trying hard enough. Of course, we should also remember the words that our founder, Pastor Martin Luther, spoke 500 years before Denzel Washington in a sermon to his congregation. He said to them, For God's sake, get out there and sin boldly and believe in Christ even more boldly still. Please join me in the hymn of the day. O God, we yearn for safety, we long to be secure, yet faithful, loving service is what you value more. You give us what is needed, you love, forgive, and save, then sending us to serve you, you call us to be brave. You give to some ten talents, to others two or three, to some you give one blessing to manage faithfully. For you, O Lord, are loving and do not demand success. You daily call your people to lives of faithfulness. You give your church the gospel, good news for us to share. You give us great compassion for neighbors everywhere. You give us skills to serve you and loving work to do. We're blessed to be a blessing and called to risk O God, it seems much safer to live from day to day, protecting what you lend us and hiding it away. Yet all these gifts can't flourish when hidden in the ground. When we are brave to share them, your blessings will come. We confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray. In thanks for all the blessings of life, for work and rest, for food and shelter, for love and laughter, for beauty and harmony, we return these offerings to you, O God. We pray that our thanks is pleasing in your sight, and that what we offer is used again for sustenance and growth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we pray together as God's people. At the end of each petition, I will say, Gracious Lord, I ask you to respond. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that your intention for us and for all creation is success and not failure. Send us the Spirit to stir up in us a trust that overcomes fear, a hope that transcends doubt. That no matter what we encounter in life, what we see happening around us and around the world, we will always strive to be faithful workers for your kingdom, reflecting compassion and grace and love in all that we say and do. Gracious Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are limited and even paralyzed by their fear of failure. Send them voices and hands that will lift their horizons and awaken in them the courage and confidence they need to realize the potentials of their gifts and talents. At the same time, 
Guard them from harsh and unjust people. Humble the arrogant and the narcissistic. Bring the exploitive and the corrupt to justice. And thwart the success of those who plan violence from their hate and their fear. Gracious Lord, Amen. hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for the church and especially for grace as we wend our way through this season of being separated from each other, being separated from the sacrament, and being separated from raising our voices in praise together. Bless our plans for being safe by walking with us through this time successfully and renewing the strength and the health of our congregation in due time. Give success to those who are working tirelessly on a vaccine and those working on how to get us all vaccinated. Give strength to those who are on the front lines and are anxious about facing a growing wave of illness. Restore the ill to health. Be the peace of the dying. Give hope to the grieving. Gracious Lord. Heavenly Father, the arrival of the fall colors reminds us of the beauty and the bounty of your design for creation. We give thanks for the harvests and for the food that we enjoy so abundantly every day. Keep us ever conscious of sharing gratefully from our abundance so that everyone may eat. And keep us conscious of how we impact creation in the choices that we make leading us to be the good stewards of the resources you have turned over into our care. Gracious Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we also continue our prayers for our nation as we draw ever closer to making decisions about who will lead us in the next four years. We give thanks for the healing of our president and ask that you give him the wisdom to speak and lead effectively and selfishly for the benefit of all Americans. We pray that our Congress also is able to come together and to legislate the support Americans need to succeed in the face of the economic hardships of this pandemic. And we pray that each of us will also have the discipline, the patience, and the compassion we need to do our part in keeping our community and our economy strong by doing whatever is necessary to truly love our neighbors. Gracious Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear our prayers for those who are on our hearts and our minds. Gracious Lord. Hear our prayer. And Father, we ask that you hear the prayers that we humbly offer even for ourselves. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. And now we pray boldly as your Son has taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Wonderful to see you all. Please stay safe, stay well, and help someone else do the same if you can.